to matter again with Minister Noonan is uh, in the name of the Senators Lisa Chambers and Pauline O'Reilly the need for the Minister for Transport to make a statement on the new report on the Western Rail Corridor published by Professor John Bradley entitled uh, The Atlantic Rail Railway Corridor, the Galway Mayo Rail Link and Appraisal. Uh, Senator O'Reilly, go ahead. Thank you, Lass uh, Cahirlock, and uh, Senator uh, Chambers has been unavoidably detained, and so I'll be taking the commencement matter today on behalf of both of us. Um, Senator Chambers and myself brought this issue um, up at order of business, and the leader had uh, has suggested that we both do a joint commencement matter. So I am here representing both of us. I know that it's something that Senator Chambers feels passionately about for her county of Mayo, and uh, for myself, this is about climate, it's about the economy, of of the North West um, and it's about really joined up thinking when it comes to transport. Uh, I believe fundamentally that we can have a rail link and also a greenway that goes along the Western Rail Track. So I'm asking you here today, Minister, to uh, look at, uh, at mo moving forward with phases two and three of the Western Rail cor Corridor, because what's very clear from this latest report, which I hope that you've read, which is 200 pages, and I'm sure that you have, from Dr Bradley, is uh, it has pointed out many discrepancies and many inaccuracies from the EY report that was commissioned by the department itself in relation to the Western Rail Corridor. Uh, the West, West on Track, which is a group of, um, of volunteers from the from West, from, from Galway and from Mayo, uh, they looked at this EY report, uh, you may remember, in February and found that in the report there were 324 numerical er errors. Uh, 31 typos and 23 errors of fact, and some of them, in fact, very serious. And what this latest report, the, the Bradley report, is showing, that the capital costs that the EY report uh, said that this, this uh, reopening would cost, it's actually 50% lower in the opinion of, of Dr. Bradley. So I'd like to hear what it is that the department are going to do in relation to this and how we can move forward. Because what, uh, what this Western Rail Corridor does, it's, it's not just about how many people are there at the moment, but it's actually fundamentally about a transport first, a town centre's first approach to planning. Um, you have to put in the transport in order to get the kind of planning and development that it is that you want. It's certainly very much Green Party policy, uh, that if there's rail and if that rail is viable, that that's what you do first. Otherwise, we're going to see a continuation of sprawl, which is what we don't want. Um, the Minister, I know the Department has put funding into double tracking or is putting funding into double tracking of Athenry to Galway. This rail link would actually link that double tracking up with Clare Morris and in turn then with the Mayo Dublin line. Um, so from many, many points of view, it's really important. Number one, economy, because tourists come to Galway. How do we move them up? to the northwest, which is one of the, the, we have three regions in this country and it's the only region that is designated as a region in transition um, economically by the European Union. So the other two regions economically are seen as, you know, doing, doing very well and the, the northwest um, isn't. Now, many will disagree with how well uh, some of the regions are doing, but th this isn't the European standard. Um, and I think so if, if we want to get the industry, if we want to get the tourism, we have to put in place the infrastructure. And uh, quite apart from that, um, what this report showed was that actually there would be 5.5 million kilometres per annum fewer road trips by 2030. So, from a climate point of view, we would see a reduction in the number of cars. We would also see 2.8 million kilometres per annum reduction in HG, HGVs because that line could actually take a lot of haulage. So, Minister, I, I'd love to hear what, what you'll say in relation to this, how the department is going to rectify either the errors or, and also to move forward with phases two and three. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator O'Reilly. Minister? Uh, Good morning. I guess, uh, uh, thanks to Senator O'Reilly and Senator Chambers for bringing this uh, commencement forward. Um, and as Senator O'Reilly has quite rightly said, this is about town centres, it's about sustainable transport, it's about balanced regional development, and it's about uh, tackling climate change. I think uh, I think there's really important uh, uh, matter. 
As the Senators are aware, the Minister is a firm believer in the positive potential of increased and expanded sustainable mobility options, whether those are walking, cycling, bus or rail. The Senators have referenced a new report on the Western Rail Corridor, a copy of, of which I understand the Minister has received in the past few days. This report is in fact the third such report published this year in relation to the Western Rail Corridor, although it is the first one produced by those campaigning for a reopening of the line between Athenry and Clare Morris. As one might reasonably expect from a campaign group, the report is of course very positive about the potential reopening and the benefits it might bring. However, as I say, this report, third report was published this year on the, uh, the Western Rail Corridor. The first report was the EY report referred to by the Senators. The report was commissioned by Aaron Rod Aaron and conducted by EY consultants with the assistance of specialist engineering experts also. It was commissioned in line with the decision of the previous government and was a financial and economic appraisal of the potential reopening of phases two and three of the Western Rail Corridor. I understand that there have been some criticisms of the EY report, as stated by Senator O'Reilly, particularly by those campaigning for a reopening of the Western Rail Corridor, who in turn commissioned this most recent report in response. However, th there was in fact already an independent review commissioned by the Department of Transport upon its receipt of the EY report and prior to Minister Ryan bringing the issue to government in December last. The second report, known as the JASPERS Review, it was carried out by the agency at, known as JASPERS, which uh, is an agency established by the European Commission and the European Investment Bank to assist member states in making investments in European regions like the West of Ireland. The JASPERS, JASPERS Review concluded that the findings of the EY report were not unreasonable. Specifically in relation to the projected costs and demand, the areas of the EY report which have been criticised by the, this new report, the review found them to be within reasonable ranges, although perhaps based on design solution and operational plan that might be considered overly optimistic. However, more importantly than that are the four key observations of the JASPERS review which are fundamental to the future development or otherwise of the Western Rail Corridor and indeed our rail network generally. The JASPERS review noted that the proposed reopening of the Western Rail Corridor did not address any identified social or transport constraint, did not fit with any broader strategic framework for the development of rail in Ireland, did not contribute towards our climate action challenge and would not attract EU funding in its present form. In response to these issues, Minister Ryan has committed to an all-island strategic rail review to examine all aspects of inter-urban and inter-regional rail on the island of Ireland, including lines such as the Western Rail Corridor. The, re the review will also consider where it might be appropriate for high or higher speed rail on the network. In addition, it will examine the role of rail of rail and freight and how best to decarbonise intercity and interregional rail services. It is in this strategic rail review that, that will provide the strategic framework for the development of rail in Ireland, identify the social and transport constraints that rail can help to address, set out how to move towards net zero railway in the future and to ensure our rail investments are fully aligned with EU policy in the area. I understand the review will commence very shortly, and I know that Minister Ryan looks forward to its completion. Gormavad. Thank you very much, Minister. Senator? Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister, for your response. I think the, the main issue that I would have with the EY report is, and, and some of it which you've outlined, is actually on what premise it was it was looking um, at, at the Western Rail Corridor. And fundamentally, public transport is about a public good. Um, and that is what the reopening and the, of the Western Rail Corridor, the um, advancement of phase two and three is about for me. It is about a public good, a social good, and also a benefit to the, to the planet. Um, I think that we need to not necessarily put aside all economic constraints, but we do need to look at transport as not about how much money we can bring in, but actually how much development and economy, quite apart from the line itself, is, is going to be brought about by putting in place this, um, this rail line. It isn't necessarily always about the number of passengers that are there at the moment, but the number of passengers that it will bring and deliver in the future. And also, as I say, um, how many uh, reduced car journeys we can ex expect from this line. So I look forward to the review. I would hope that the Minister will engage more uh, on this uh, over the coming months. Thank you. Thanks very much, Senator. Minister? 
Again, uh, Senator O'Reilly makes uh, excellent points, really uh, valid points in relation to this, and I, I, I am of the view, and the Minister is of the view, that the strategic rail review will be conducted on an all-island basis and identify those needs, as she has spoken about, and it will be carried out with the, the support of the Northern Ireland e Executive to provide a much more holistic overview of what's required. And it will seek to address the shortcomings identified in the JASPERS review and mean that individual projects put forward later for consideration can be link linked back to a strong strategic framework Framework. Importantly, it will also identify how we move our interurban and interregional rail services off of fossil fuels and towards a decarbonised future, as we must do by, by 2050. It will also examine the potential role of freight rail, which is something that was mentioned by the centre here as well this morning, which I think is critically important. But I think the, the, the points made in relation to balanced regional development and towards that social gain that's going to be uh, accrued from having um, an expanded rail network in Ireland are critically important. And I would be confident that this particular review being carried out by Minister Ryan will uh, seek and, and identify those objectives, uh, particularly for the west of Ireland. Thanks very much.